creativity is the access to our own God energy, you know, our own source energy. So whenever I'm feeling low self-esteem, low confidence, that's usually when negative dynamics happen in my relational situations because I'm feeling small. I'm already feeling like I'm not expressing myself. And now maybe I'm seeking external validation. And the awareness is, no, I have to step into my own power, my own expression. I have to come back to that place of self-love. I grew up in New York City, then we moved to India for three years, and then when I came back in sixth grade, I went back to the same all-girls school in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And that year, I was very bullied, I was very excluded, people would purposely not sit next to me on the bus, people would like steal my uniform during gym, it, it shattered my self-confidence. At the same time, it, it forced me to have to find other outlets for my creative expression and, and for my confidence. There's a bit of a wound there, because I can see how I don't belong to any group to this day. And my parents, they used to take me to the piano lessons all the time. I used to find it so oppressive because you had to just learn whatever the song was in the book rather than being taught what I should have been taught, which is like, here's all of the different scales, go make your own songs. On the drums, on the other hand, drums felt like freedom. Drums felt like there's no wrong answer, play, play what you need to play. Music is a timestamp of emotion. Here's an audio timestamp of this emotion that I felt and now I've, boom, put it there in case you might feel that too. We can feel it together and we can get out of it together. I was raised with two very high achieving Indian parents. And so it is very much so the case that every time I'm achieving something, everyone's happy. And then every time that like things are not so high achieving, everyone's neutral or not so happy. So as a kid, that's a very programmed experience. When I achieve, I'm loved. When I don't achieve, questionable. Even to this day, I'm actively working on that, you know, doing things privately to receive joy. I think I had been constantly on the move for the years before the pandemic, and so I was stimulated with things that I enjoyed doing. And the beauty of that is that you walking in alignment, you doing things that matter to you, but the problem with that is that there's no moments of listening to yourself, healing wounds, being aware of where there's some shadow work that still has to be done. And so that's been the biggest thing coming out of the pandemic. We didn't have that constant feedback loop. I felt the pain of not having that readily available. That was like a healthy heartbreak that had to happen break something that's not serving me. I was spending time upstate recording different sounds, sounds of like crackling of the leaves, stomping, throwing pebbles into streams, things like that. And the idea was, you know, if the music that I'm making lyrically is good for you, what if I could source all of the beats and all of the electronics from raw audio material that was entirely from nature. I would love to have like a crunch sound that's like our snare. And then I would want to find like a wooden bellowing sound that I can use, boom, as a kick. The fun part is to interact with nature and see what's happening and record it. By design, we as humans are meant to interact with the sounds of nature. We're meant to be connected to animals and to trees and to understand ourselves in the context of something larger. But to come back to nature through the process of recording those sounds and then implementing it into my music was a really, really powerful and rewarding process. And then, you know, I started to expand it. I went to Antarctica and I was recording the sound of glaciers melting under the water. And you're listening to the slow sound of the iceberg melting in the ocean. It's tragic and beautiful at the same time. It's beautiful because it's life. It's super tragic because the beauty is being destroyed and we know better and we're still doing it. I remember spending time in nature and like literally having direct conversations with the moon where I would just be like crying to the moon about something that was upsetting me. Like maybe not feeling worthy, not feeling valued, not feeling beautiful. And it was such a cathartic feeling because she'd be like, you're doing good. Like I've seen generations of you over all the hundreds and hundreds of years, humanity cry to me and you're gonna be okay. When I was speaking to the moon, I'm also sp I'm speaking to myself. Sometimes what I'm seeking from other people is what I can provide for myself. There's a, there's a guaranteed safety in nature that I found through this process.
I think the pandemic allowed me to dig deeper into yeah into valuing my own heart my own sincerity and and understanding my my contribution more I feel like my contribution is sweetness is love is tenderness is kindness is joyful energy these are my essential contributions that makes me feel like I'm walking in my path that sounds super nice You know, so that's a drum beat that might be in a song, but now it's made entirely from nature. When I'm having inner peace, then I feel the most joy. I feel like when I cultivate a sense of being present, um, then I feel joyful. It's about leading with kindness and compassion, wisdom. And music, fitness, meditation, all these like expressions of that are just modalities of the main thing, which is to show up as yourself. We have to nourish ourselves in order to be in service. When I'm shining my light, I'm showing what's possible for somebody else to shine their light. Get your own mind right so you can show up being a creative, loving person for all the other people you're gonna interact with that day. In my most low confidence states, Creativity is always the thing that puts me back into a sense of purpose, self, service.